Alexa, what time is it? The time is 3.38 p.m. Alexa, I love you. That's nice of you to say. Alexa, do you love me? There are people I admire and things I can't do without, but I'm still trying to figure out human love. Why are you such a bitch? That's not very nice to say. Yeah, I'm sorry. See you waiting there. So here we are again. This is the fourth final video in this series about language exchange. In other words, this is the epilogue. As many of you know that have watched this know that I've struggled with Spanish. I may give the wrong impression. I might be a little better at it than I've come across in the videos, but Mi español es terrible. I can tell you that for sure. And I do better in Colombia because that's where I was initiated to Spanish and was there for a while. And the pronunciation was different and they talk slower and they enunciate a little better. And so when I came here, I guess getting older and set in my ways, it's been more of an adjustment. Now I have done the Various online, I bought a program, it was $500, I still have it. Bores me to tears, I've worked through part of it, it's tedious. Uh, Rosetta Stone. I've done the online free versions, I've done listening ones, I even tried uh, one that you put on and you go to sleep and it plays for like four hours. And what a joke that is. So it's been a struggle and I it's difficult for me to really understand why. I lived in Japan, as many of you know. I lived there for three years. After one year, I was fluent. I found Japanese to be a very easy language because everything is always exactly the same. It's very consistent. Nothing changes. There's no exceptions. It's kind of like doing math problems. And when you get into Spanish, it's nothing like math. If math goes out the window. It's whatever. And to be fair, so is English. And all the places that English has impossibilities, particularly different pronunciations for each letter, like an O has probably four different sounds in English. In Spanish, it's all the same. So that should make it easier, right? But then they have their things. Like everything has to be male or female. And how are you supposed to know if it's hermano or hermana? I, I don't know. And that's going to take a long time to learn. For me, I mean, it's just not fun, right? Language, learning a language is just tedious and boring and gives you a headache. It's, it's tough. If you're an immigrant, it, you owe it to the society that you go to to learn the language. Pick up on that one, USA. Stop dual and tripling languages everywhere and just People that go there need to learn English. People that come here need to learn Spanish. It's just the way it is. So, now that I've got that little tirade out of the way, what about this new thing? Well, one of my setbacks is in the couple of years I've been here, it seems like every friend I have speaks English and wants to speak English, every local friend. And so, if that's fine with me. You know, I get to be lazy and we just, speak English all the time, but it's not doing me any good, right? So coming here to Hiron, I have to go down to the market, I have to go to the store, I have to do this, that, and the other thing. And so I've been forced to use what Spanish I may know and learn some new things. And that's actually a good thing. You know, and what do they call that? They call that immersion. You become immersed in the language. And the beauty of it is you can't escape. You don't really have any choice, particularly if you need something. So let's get to this language sharing. What is that about? Well, so there's not a temptation. You take somebody who can't speak English, but speaks Spanish, and you take somebody who can't speak Spanish, but speaks English, and you put them together. You lock them in a room and you say, tell each other your life story. 
well, you know, you're, what are you going to do? You're going to grunt and wave and make signs and hear and, and you're going to use your phone and you're going to look up key words and you're not going to pronounce it right and you're going to show the other person, they're going to laugh and then you know, they're going to say something and you're going to laugh at them. And, but all the time you're actually learning and you're learning because you're really kind of interested because now you have a one-on-one -on -one and you really care about what they have to say. It's not like a computer screen where you could care less. You're just thinking about going and getting a cup of coffee and find something else to do. Here it's a human being who has a life and they have experiences and you want to get to know them. You want to know what that's all about. And so you're forced in a situation, but you're gladly forced into that situation. You know it's good for you. And the payoff is getting to understand someone and they're going through the same thing. So I decided to find a language partner. So I don't know if you recall, but a bunch of videos back, I was staying at the Santa Canela and I walked down on Broken Bridge and I met this girl named Sandy. She got stung by a bee. And we talked for a little while and she took my phone number and I didn't think I'd hear anything, but we started text or what's up. You know, we started texting back and forth for a number of weeks. And then one night, uh, she texted me and said, Would you mind meeting my sister? She wants to learn English. Yeah, okay, sure. So it took a while, but we finally made a, an appointment. And we went to Millennium Plaza, and you all saw the video. We went to the Sports Planet. And while I was there, I saw a waitress who actually for three years has run a program like that as a group. I met Adriana at the Sports Planet and we proceeded to try to communicate to each other and it was difficult but it was good and we got enough, I mean we got to laugh at each other and we didn't have to feel bad about it because we're both in the same boat. I mean she'd screw something up and say something hilarious and it, it, it didn't matter because I was going to do it the next time I spoke. So, so it was a good thing. And we decided that we would just go ahead and continue with this. And it turned out that um, I was asked to go to a language share, another one at Santa Canela, my, one of my favorite places. So, yeah, so I asked her. And she said, yeah, sure, can I bring my lawyer associate? And is there someone there for her? Sure, more the merrier. So we all go, and then that was the last video. Here's my takeaway. The group, I can see some real advantages. Now that was the first meeting of our group, and what traditionally will happen is when those groups meet, they're actually doing little word exercises, and it's, it's a bit guided. I mean, it's, it's loose, it's informal, but it's somewhat guided to keep you on a path, and I suppose that's pretty good. I'm not really a very social person. I kind of push myself to be. But for me, the group was kind of distracting. And Tanya, I spent some time talking with her and uh, different, different people there. And, and it was okay. But for me personally, that's more in the line of a social event and that's not my favorite thing. And, at first it's okay, but it wears on me pretty quick and I just want to go find myself a quiet room and shut the door. But I would highly recommend this to people because most people are not backwards like me. Most people want a, a, a certain element of social in their life, particularly if they come to a place like Ecuador and Cuenca where they don't know a lot of people. It's a perfect opportunity to not only meet a bunch of people, make some new friends, but to be in a situation where you actually can learn the language, it doesn't feel so much like work, it's really more like an exercise in having fun. Now, for me in particular, I really liked and I got a lot out of the one-on-one. -on -one. And we have done that pretty much every day except I think Sunday uh, since we met last week. And she's coming out this weekend, and we're going to spend the weekend just one-on-one -on -one having conversations about everything we can think of to try to get a handle on, on this language. She's come a very long way in a short time, and so have I. 
I'm amazed at how quick we were actually in the beginning we could barely throw a word at each other and now it's not that we're really having conversations but between the two of us we're getting out enough so that we actually can have conversations or expressions about things in our life. She's told me about how she came to Cuenca and the law firm and all of those things in her life and she's asked me questions about my life and as much as I'm willing to say I you know I was able to express to her it was a very positive experience for me and it, it continues on and it takes out that big social element for me now I like I said I realize that I'm kind of weird that way and most people tend to be a little more normal and for them to want to go with a group and socialize is really perfect. If there's a single thing you do about Spanish, it's not online, it's not by programs, it's not hire a teacher, it's not go to a class, and you can do all those things, but you're going to get your most bang for the, well, these classes are free, or these groups are free, but you're going to get the most out of it, I believe, by doing this language share. I was very impressed. I could just feel all of these words that were in the back of my head that I don't think about pouring out. Some of them even in sentences, if you can imagine that. So, huge thumbs up. I want to thank Sports Planet for allowing Pamela to give her work time to me for that interview. It was a very good interview. From everything I know about that program, it's an excellent program. I will probably try it sometime. I want to thank Santa Canella for hosting the meeting that I did attend. I'm not sure, honestly, I don't even know if they have a name. Tanya's the person that contacted Well, here's what you do. You just contact Freddie at Santa Canella and he'll head you in the right direction. Hopefully, that's my final word, my final rambling word on this topic. Next video, or the video after, I've got a couple that I've, I'm actually planning. I'm not sure which one's going to come out first. Tomorrow, I go to Cuenca, and I have an interview with somebody at Balhanica Insurance. All of those, that mess that's out there that nobody knows, the government has no answers for, she sat in on a meeting that was kind of a private by invite only meeting, Thumbs up if you like this series. If you have any comments and requests, please send them on. Thank you for all the supporters, the Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Uh, and that's it for this one. See you later. You know you're cool.